What you're looking at here is the beginning of a study, and I'm not going to get very detailed, but I'm going to use it to show off maybe my favorite aspect of the brush tool. Because when you're doing a study, you're kind of torn between two different aspects. You want to have big, loose gestural strokes, you know, add in kind of dynamic line work, but you also don't want to lose your edges. So here, previously, I had this nice, sharp edge, and obviously now I've lost it. Those are in conflict. Photoshop gives us lots of different ways to solve these problems, but a common problem is that they involve lots of buttons and lots of menus and certainly lots of extra layers. What I want to show you today is a little checkbox that gives a great compromise. And the box I'm talking about is the lock transparent pixels. Now you've probably seen this in other videos, but it's worth reiterating. So here I have just a single layer with a rock shape on it. I painted it with a brush. As soon as I lock the transparent pixels, when I paint more on the layer, the boundaries of the shape remain unchanged. So I can paint big strokes on the same layer, and they're not going outside of the lines. This has really nothing to do with traditional media. If you come from an oil painting background, there's really no analog here. But what it allows you to do is to make these big marks and you know not worry about that approaching edge. As long as you locked in the edge and the shape you liked the first time around, then you just lock the transparent pixels and don't even worry about it. Or if you want to change the shape, well, that's easy too. So here I could unlock the transparent pixels, go in here, and maybe now I use an eraser. And I could kind of refine this shape a little bit. Maybe I started with kind of a rough block in and now I want to get a little more specific. Okay, say I like it again, I will lock transparent pixels, and now I can continue painting. So going back to the brush tool, I'm still painting inside the shape. I've just updated the shape. So let's see the whole process one more time in action for the shadow. So I'll make a new layer. This time it's underneath the rock. And I'm just going to paint in the shape of the shadow. I'm going to do just whatever color suits me for now because it's very placeholder. But here you can see I'm using big active shapes big dynamic brush marks because I'm not worried about the individual color of each stroke. It's the shape first and then I'll deal with the color in a minute. So here I'm kind of carving away with the eraser getting that exact shape that I want. Were I doing this without the recording going I'd be a little more careful but you get the point. So there I've got a shape. Clearly the color is wrong. Now I lock the transparent pixels and I can once again use big, bold brush marks. So I'm sampling from the photo reference here because my goal is not to try and match these colors perfectly by eye, but you can see I'm just painting with these big brush marks and staying right inside the lines. And it's all possible because of that one little checkbox. Once again, say I want to change the shape, unlock the layer transparency, go in here and maybe remove a little paint, or maybe I also wanted to add a little paint here. So here I'm changing the shape. Once I'm happy, lock it again. And now I can go back to using those big marks. One layer, but a great compromise. Now clearly there are limitations with this method and other types of masking and layer groups will certainly solve those issues. But when it comes to just making a quick painting, where you want to be able to juggle both edge control and dynamic brush marks, I think this method is really powerful. So give it a try.